You know what it's time for, Erica. Oh no. Do 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 <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode. Uh, Michael and Erica here. We are going to give a quick, hopefully quick, we'll see how quick, review of Super Mario Brothers 3 for the NES. Okay, so as you can see on this other screen, we are going to be playing, while we're talking, we are playing the Super Nintendo port on Super Mario All-Stars, which is functionally the same. It's just on a system that I own so that we can play it. Okay, so let's just start playing a little bit and we can start talking about some of these story things. Okay, so starting off, we're talking about the story of the game. What about the world of the game? How cohesive do you think this world is? Oh, it's a five. Yeah, I agree. It's very, it's consistent for itself, for its own sake, and it's very consistent for the whole Mario universe. Yep. Okay, so how interesting do you think this world is? Uh, can I give it a 10? No. You get to know a lot of the thematic material throughout everything, but there's enough variability between boards that you can tell, okay, this is the ice world, and this is like the introductory world, but they're all very interesting in their own right. And it gets, you can see it getting progressively harder without feeling like a very weird um, change from one to the next. Yeah. So out of, out of five? Five. I will say the same. Mm -hmm. How vibrant is this world? Well, again, I remember this differently from when I was playing it on my original Nintendo. Right. And I always thought that was vibrant enough, but I know I also never had a Super NES myself as a kid, so I would say this is definitely a 5 out of 5 for vibrancy, but I would have probably said the same for it in its original form. I agree. What about tropes? Again, I'm totally fine with this because it was groundbreaking in a lot of ways, and it it set a lot of the standards in the, in the Mario world, um, which is sort of ironic because it was the third game, but it, you know, it, it, it reached a new plateau in terms of creativity and uniqueness in the series. Oh, see, I'm confusing <laughs> my stuff. And we're also doing several things at the same time. Yes. We're also drinking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I take it you give this a five? Yeah. I also give it a five and it's, you know, even though it's very similar to the other Mario games, just the new mechanics, the new power-ups and things like that make this more of the same thing, but it's an improvement yeah. on the same thing. Agreed. How's the difficulty curve of this game? Uh, Does it get too difficult too quickly or anything like that? No. You could make the argument that this game is a little long-ish, but like it's so good that we don't really care how long it is. We like being able to play. For as long as we do. And of course, you know, there's shortcuts like there are in all the Mario games. So I would say the pacing is, is really good because you can kind of play for as long as you need to once you get, you know, once you've gotten good at it. Yeah, that's sort of a common complaint that I see about a lot of media. Like, oh, it's too long. Well, then just stop. Yeah. Like, no one's forcing you to do all of it at once. Yeah. And this was of an age where a lot of the games were like that. I'm not going to do that. And they were progressively harder. So you could play for as long as you needed to. And that was... It was part of how you got good at it, was having to go back and practice. Yeah. There are some um, NES games especially that the game has more value in how long you're playing it just because of how difficult it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is that. I think this game is an appropriate difficulty, mm -hmm. but also like we all had it. We could all beat it when we were kids. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. I don't know if I could beat it anymore, at least not easily. If I practiced a little bit, I probably could. You know, I would have to think real hard about it. It's been a long time since I've played through the whole game. And, uh, yeah, I probably am not sure if I could do it either. Moving on to heroes, um, Mario and Luigi are kind of the same thing. So let's just put them together in this. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about Mario and Luigi in this game? How do I... I mean, they're hot. What, <laughs> what do you mean, how do I feel about them? It's it's a little bit weird talking about characters in an early Mario game, because that's not what it's about. It's about the world, it's about the gameplay. This scoring system was invented with JRPGs in mind, and that is not what we were playing today. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, villains. Um, so let's, let's just sort of do blanket again. Bowser, all of his kids, 
and also even all of the monsters in this game. How do you feel? Is there anything that you really like or really don't like? I mean, I don't like when I lose to them, <laughs> but that's that was one thing that the first Mario game really could have like. Okay, we could have done better with the villain level, and they steadily improved through the course of the Mario series. And this one, I think, was really, really interesting in that all of the Mario villains were very different from each other, and like, you know exactly which character we're talking about when I say, you know, stop throwing bracelets at me. Mm -hmm. And we know exactly where that is. It sort of becomes associated. It's fun to have villains who, even if they have essentially the same characteristics in like they don't they're they're not all completely different but they do feel different enough and they you know just giving them names that we actually know like we know her name was wendy mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't know what most of the you know, oh i failed boo we don't know what most of the um, enemies names are in most of the other mario games mm -hmm. npcs in this game it's basically just toad the king of each level and the princess. I can't really give a rating to them. Yeah, it, it's... I mean, they're cute. I do really like the added little visual joke in each world of the king being transformed into something. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that is true. And, you know, having Toad be like an ambassador to each bored and each yeah. boss le or uh, either before or after beating the boss Ooh. um oh, come on man you got hit <laughs> by the same cannonball twice um the, having having that little leeway is just a really nice design element even if it's not really relevant to gameplay for heaven's sake that was close yes it was i'm probably gonna die maybe i believe in you Ba -da -da -da. <laughs> okay, so let's give NPCs a five. Yeah. Do you want to say something else? Yeah, I would say a four okay. just because you can't do anything with them, but I don't want to be picky. I, that's pretty typical of most games, though. That's sort of what the NPCs are there for. Yeah. Yeah, I give it a five. Okay. Because Toad is awfully cute. <laughs> yeah. And I like that the kings are all different at the end. Yeah. So let's move on to graphics. So um, this is a little bit tricky because we are not playing on the original hardware. Mm -hmm. Comparing it to other games from the time in your memory of the original NES version of this game, how do you feel about the graphics? I love them. I think they're perfect and I want them to never change. I want this stylization and these graphics and this sort of design and layout to be exactly what it is. And I don't really hold that up with, you know, advancing the world of game design. Oh no. That's all right. Yeah, I, I, uh, I in general don't care about graphics in games. Like, I, like as we've talked about, I play mostly JRPGs. Yes. And those, Ooh. some of those do have really nice graphics. That's not, until we get into more recent games, that's not the point of the game. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is the point of the game and that's fine too, but that's not what this is. Right. So So I'm going to give the graphics fives for us all across the board. There are no cutscenes in this game, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's move on to design. You know, we already talked about how they're original, but also consistent and varied enough. Uh, there are no towns or dungeons in this. Although I guess we could talk about, like, world Can you map. Stay away from ah. me, damn it! I guess we could talk about world map versus, like, in a level. I think one of the things that this game does really well is the world map. Um, mm -hmm. It's really cute to see all the little hills like dancing together mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You see the little creatures walking around, and you can—it gives you a visual. Ooh, you can have that. It gives you a visual uh, pace. It, it helps it with the pacing to have this idea of oh look how far I have to go. Why is this board so big and that yeah. kind of stuff? Oh, oh. just missed. Drink more, Michael. <laughs> yeah, that'll make me better. It seems like fives across the board from both of us again. Yeah. Though we are not playing with sound currently, let's talk about the music of this game. <gasps> Yay! Oh, we have been singing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's well done. That's what's going on right now. <laughs> Is it? 
I think so. Something like that. Okay. But it's weird that like we remember this stuff so well. I think a lot of people who are not musicians, you could play music from Mario 3 and they would be able to tell you exactly what it was. Oh yeah. Where you were, what your anxiety level was, all of that. <laughs> I think even beyond just something that we know yeah. because it, we've played it so much, it's also just well done. Yeah. Um, and it did use like, you know, we've, we've talked about the sort of interesting sound bit they had to create with the first Mario game, and now they obviously have a little more to work with. Damn it. So we had more that they could do, and they like used it to its max. And the sound effects mm -hmm. in this game, composer Nico Muley talks about how playing a video game is sort of like an entrance into composing. The whole idea of like, I push a button and the character does this thing that makes a sound, but it fits in with this world. Like getting a little coin that ba ding mm -hmm. seems to fit in the composition. Yeah. What about the instrument quality in this game? So this one, this is a little bit harder to, for me at least, to remember exactly because I, I have played this and especially more recently on my Super Nintendo where all the sound quality is up a little bit. So it's kind of hard to remember exactly what it was like on the NES, at least for me. It didn't. It didn't have as much of the depth, um, but that was largely about the kind of TV it was on, rather than, you know, the maybe the sound cards at the time. It, you know, it always just sounded like digital music, and if you were able to get it at a good vo volume that it wasn't like blasting your eardrums, then it just it be, it came together nicely. And having more uniform instrumentation kinds of sounds made it like it it was what that soundtrack was designed to be yeah i don't think the instrument you know the midi instrument quality really starts to come into effect until the super nintendo yeah when like another game review of something i played through recently that i will be talking about on this channel soon i'm disappointed in the recording quality because i know other games that came out about the same year sounded better or the instrument quality fit the world the music was trying to create better but in in this in this game and in most things from the nes i think it's pretty good mm -hmm. there are some standout games on the nes that i think have really incredible compositions and it's like how did they get this cartridge to make these sounds yeah but um and i don't i don't think this is one of them but i don't have a problem with that yeah, it's kind of like what I was saying before. This is this is exactly what it needs to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have a lot of games now with these big orchestral movie like scores and that's that's what they need and that's what we can do now. But for this world, you know, I don't think that if they had made this game today, I mean, it might not have been as big of a seller, but it wouldn't have needed something much more complicated than this. Okay, so the next thing is gameplay. So how do you feel about the mini games in this game? Oh, well that, you know, the rolling try to get extra lives thing is is annoying i used to be able to hit that same i think i think that might have been easier on the nes yeah maybe but the mini games are good that that memory card game is frustrating because again i used to have all those memorized but yeah. that's kind of what we did back in the because again we just we played this all the time because we had nothing else to do and the mini games are are good and short and satisfying but those little ninjas are obnoxious Ooh. dude you're not forced to play them ever which is nice mm -hmm. i kind of wish there was a little more variety we saw some of that later on yeah i'm giving the camera a five because it's n never a problem in this game learning curve i i think the learning curve is a really appropriate yeah yeah the first couple boards really do give you almost everything you need yeah to get through the game until you get to like later boards where you have the tanuki and stuff like that, but you still get the general concept of what's what you need to do. What do you give this game out of a hundred? A thousand. So a hundred is what you're saying. Sure. <laughs> um, this this is probably my favorite video game. I'm also going to give it a hundred. That leaves us now with our final score. Uh, we each gave. The game perfect scores on absolutely everything. Uh -huh. So this is a perfect game then. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it is. It is quite the perfect game. Yeah. There's something just so satisfying about being able to 
whip through this game and however amount of time you have and it's like it's like visiting old friends in that case we can suggest that you like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts if they are different from ours in any way at the time we're filming this i'm just about to a, a week from today start writing about a playthrough review of final fantasy 4 and uh, ramin is unfortunately unable to join me for that he just doesn't have the time but He'll be at something soon. <laughs> and no negativity in the comments, please. If you do, I'm coming after you with a turtle shell. <laughs> I know we suck and we're not playing very good, but I'd like to see you try. I mean, the, our viewers probably can't do better than that, mm. but that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> a quick review will be coming up soon for Final Fantasy III. So if you have any thoughts on that, let us know in the comments. And I'm just not going to get that. <laughs> Do something good. Yeah. And have fun, but be smart about it. Yeah. And just, you know, be good in general. You know, that's good life advice. On top of all of that, maintain your groovy selves. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yes, I totally just blamed you for my death, by the way. That's all right. <laughs> I've been blamed for worse. I haven't. <laughs>